What's up gamers, it's time for the Sandbox News. This week, the new dev blog for July came out. There is a lot of interesting, cool new things in it. One thing that wasn't covered in the dev blog though is this new map. You might recognize it. It's flat grass, but the new Sandbox version. It's a big flat area with grass and a building. There is a staircase and a lot of detail in this too. If I look closely at the sidewalk here, there's so much detail put into this, even the staircase. It's insane. So as you would expect, it's just a flat open field and there is a garage area. It's kind of dark right now and the ceiling is pretty low, but everything in here is subject to change. I'll spawn a car. There is one thing which is very disappointing about this and I'm sure they'll change it later. They have invisible walls for some reason. I don't know why, but they have a skybox and the map just turns into skybox. So if you're flying a plane, you'll just crash into it randomly. I'm sure this will get removed later. I really don't know why they have it like that right now. It's kind of bizarre. I'm sure in the future, they'll probably make this map either infinite or a huge island with an ocean after, but we'll find out in the future. If you like this content, you should click the like button and subscribe so you'll know when I upload my next video. This week, they also added some very basic VR support to Sandbox. So previously, the VR camera was just stuck at the world origin and you couldn't move around or anything. Now they added some very basic functions to the VR camera where you can move it around and change the scale compared to the world. With this very basic functionality, I was able to make a basic VR mode. It's similar to how VR games were in 2013 when they were just developing VR headsets. You have a regular player that's controlled by either mouse and keyboard or controller and a VR headset that's just strapped onto the regular player. It's pretty cool though. They are adding more functionality to it though. The other day Gary was working on getting hand tracking in the game. Here we can see a test he was doing with hand tracking. He has boxes as his hands. I'm sure in a couple weeks we'll see a full VR test game mode from Face Punch. Now let's look at the dev blog for July. This came out yesterday, but it says the date was July 30th, so oh well. I covered most of this stuff in my videos, but there are a few things I didn't cover. For example, UI controls. I can actually go in game and look at this. So in the menu, I click the little potion bottle and I can mess with the different sizes of this and change the color. It's a cool text editor preview example. There's a blur size for the drop shadow, offset, and change the color. It's insane. I like to eat the burger with a square. There are a lot more editor examples in here, and all of them you can look at yourself in the game's code. It's in add-ons, menu, code, UI tests. And then in here, you can see all the different UI tests that are in the game, and you can even modify them and play with them all you like. Next up is environment props. They've been working on a few environment props. I believe I've shown off these benches and maybe these industrial props, I don't know. But these right here, the bollard and the light are new. They also made a destructible fence, which I'll show off in a bit. If we go into sandbox on construct, we can see the new destructible fence. It's pretty crazy. Also, an art pass has been done to the grass area of Construct. I don't know why my video is lagging. I probably have to restart my computer to fix it. Anyways, if I spawn a car and then I drive into the fence. What? Are the Gibbs broken? No way. Oh, that's weird. I guess in the latest update of Sandbox, they broke the Gibbs on the car. Huh. Usually when you drive your car into it, it will crash over. <laughs> the fence will break realistically, but I guess it's broken right now and it only breaks realistically when I shoot it. Oh well, I'll show it off properly in next week's video once it's been fixed. So we have this cool new brick path and all of this is actually hammer geometry. This is not a single texture. They made the fancy brickwork in the level editor. It's very impressive. Now back in the dev blog, they also updated light cookies. So if you don't know, a light cookie is basically what your flashlight looks like. 
It's used for things other than flashlight, but a flashlight is the best example. So this light cookie right here actually makes the light look like a rainbow. And this one, the light cookie is of Terry's face. So it's a picture of the Terry model, but it is the flashlight. The flashlight is Terry's face. If you don't know, Terry is the name of the sandbox character model. So you can make any texture work as a light cookie now, including pictures from the internet. So I guess this Terry picture was from the internet. They updated volumetric light banding. I guess that's like graphical improvement. It has no impact on performance, which is pretty great. Here they mention the developer preview queue, which I've discussed about in my previous video, so you should go watch those if you don't know what that is. Here we have the settings menu, which I've showed off. Apparently there was an issue where map file sizes would be two to three times larger than they needed to be, and that was fixed. So that'll mean quicker downloads and less install size. The other day they made it so that the source file for the sandbox character is available and included with the game. So if I go into the asset browser, I can search for citizen and if I double click this, it'll open up the model and I can actually edit this. If I make any changes, I would want to save it as a different version. But in here we can see just how advanced this is and people can take this basic model and learn from it and it'll be a lot easier to make custom character models. We can look through the animations. There is even a secret animation which we haven't seen before. The dab. They added game and map searching. I've already shown this off. So in the menu, I can search for games and I can organize them by popular, trending, newest, and live. My NPC zombie mode is actually the second most popular game mode in Sandbox right now, which is pretty crazy. Behind the Sandbox mode, of course, there was a problem with network data, but most people aren't gonna care about that. There were some improvements to the tools. So a couple days ago, the dot grid was added. If you don't know, in Source 1, there was an option to have a dot grid like this, and some people liked it. I never used it personally, but now there's an option in Sandbox of Hammer. They also added a view model camera for the Animgraph editor. So now when you're setting up all the animations for your weapons, you'll be able to see them in first person mode. And I guess dragging models used to be broken inside the model editor, but that's been fixed now. As we all know, there was a lot of work on Construct. We have the extremely detailed roads, and the breakable fences. They're spending a lot of time making new assets because right now Sandbox doesn't include any default assets. There's not going to be Half-Life assets by default and the rest assets probably won't be in the final game because they don't work very well in Source 2. It would just be better to make completely new models instead. They also added static light shadows. I thought this was already a feature in the game, but it looks like it's been updated a little bit more. Wow, that's insane. Definitely the future of gaming. If you're ready for the future, then click the like button and subscribe. If you haven't seen my previous Sandbox News videos, I made a big playlist. You can click it, and if you watch all of it, you'll become the master of Sandbox.